Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, it's day one of off-season roadmap week. We're looking at the cut candidates for the Tennessee Titans. Should the Titans cut Ryan Tannehill? What about Taylor Lewan? What about Bud Dupree? I'm going to go over all the potential cut candidates, how much money they could save the Titans, and who should be cut all on today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it! You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Titans fans, it is day one of off-season roadmap week, and it is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You pick two to five or two to six players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to ten times, twenty-five times your money on your entry. First-time users can receive a one hundred percent instant deposit match up to a hundred dollars with promo code Locked On. That's Prize Picks. Dot com promo code locked on. Thank you guys for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. Remember Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round on all platforms and always free. Make sure you stay locked in to the Locked On Titans podcast all off season long. And today is day one of our off season roadmap week. Today I'm going to go over the cut candidates for the Titans. Tomorrow we are going to talk. The in-house free agents that the Titans have to decide whether they're going to re-sign or not. Then, we're going to look at team needs on offense and defense. And we're going to decide whether the Titans need to draft, sign, or both to address those needs. Friday, we will have a mock draft. Seven rounds going over what the Titans draft could look like. So, make sure you don't miss a single day of the off-season roadmap week here on the Locked on Titans podcast. But with that being said... We got to dive into these cut candidates. The Titans need to save some money on the cap, and the best way to do that is to cut bait on some guys who are costing you too much for the production that they're giving you out on the field. And obviously, the biggest question for the Titans this year, what are they going to do with quarterback Ryan Tannehill? Well, let's talk about the financials here. So Tannehill is set to make about $36 million on the cap this year. If the Titans decide to cut him in February, which February into March is that time where these guys start to get cut. We start to hear about the decisions the teams are going to make. If the Titans cut Ryan Tannehill in February or before free agency, they're going to save $17.8 million. But there is a dead cap charge that even if they cut him, it'll cost the Tennessee Titans. And that dead cap charge is $18.8 million. So the Titans are going to have more dead cap if they cut Ryan Tannehill than savings. But if the Titans find a viable solution at quarterback, they could potentially make this move. For example, not likely, but if Mike Vrabel convinced his friend Tom Brady to come over for $10 million this year, $20 $20 million this year. Well, if you cut Ryan Tannehill and you save $17 million and then you pay Tom Brady $20 million, well, if you add Tom Brady's twenty to the $18 million of dead cap, now you're at $38 million. And hey, if you were paying $36 million for Tannehill, why not pay $38 million for Tom Brady? Now, again, that's not likely, but I'm just using it as an example to explain to you guys what the possibilities could be. Now, in my opinion, The Titans should not cut Ryan Tannehill. If, like Amy Adams Strunk has said she wants to do, if, like Rand Carthon and Mike Vrabel have said they want to do, if they want to be a competitive football team next year, the best route and the most realistic route for them is to keep Ryan Tannehill at quarterback. He's got one more deal or one more year on his contract, and then you can get off of him with very, very little dead money. It makes a lot more sense. So I'm going to say no. The Titans should not cut Ryan Tannehill unless, unless there is one potential scenario where I think cutting Ryan Tannehill does make sense. And let me break this down for you guys. June the 1st, 
June the 1st is a big day in the NFL. It's essentially when the new fiscal year starts in the NFL. Contracts flip over. You're no longer on your 2022. You're on to 2023. If the Titans were to cut Ryan Tannehill, what they could do is they did this with Julio Jones last year. They could say, hey, we're going to cut Ryan Tannehill in February, but we are designating Ryan Tannehill as a post-June 1st cut. That means that Tannehill's savings, if you cut him, will not show up in the bank account until after June 1st. So no, if you decided to cut Ryan Tannehill as a post-June 1st designation, you wouldn't get the savings for that until after June the 1st. So it wouldn't help you during free agency or anything like that. However, what you can do is you can use those savings to sign your draft class. There are veterans that are cut during training camp or cut during the summer when the team goes through the draft and free agency and says, oh, we don't need this guy anymore. So you got money to play with there. And we saw the Titans be incredibly limited during this past season because they didn't have enough cap space during the year to make move, make big trades, make signings, things like that. So you could designate Ryan Tannehill as a post-June 1st cut. And if you did that, well, now you're saving $27 million instead of $18 million, and your dead cap is only $9.6 million rather than the 17 or rather than the 18.8 dead cap that you would have if you cut him just normally during February. Again, this is a method that the Titans used with Julio Jones last year. It saved them $15 million. They didn't get those savings until after June the 1st, but it allowed them to then sign their draft class and it allowed them to have a little bit of money to play with going forward. So I don't think the Titans should cut Ryan Tannehill. But if they do, the scenario I think that would do it is, what if they get a quarterback in the draft? They trade up for C.J. Stroud. They trade up for Bryce Young. They go after a guy like Will Levis. If the Titans take either of those three quarterbacks, you're starting them year one. Put them in. Do not waste a year of cheap rookie contract. Cut Ryan Tannehill after June 1st when you have a highly drafted rookie. Save the $27 million instead of the $17.8 million. That would make sense. Now, if the Titans were to take Anthony Richardson out of Florida, who is basically a souped-up version of Malik Willis, bigger, stronger, better athlete, more pro-ready, although he's not incredibly pro-ready, I would keep Ryan Tannehill for this year still to let Richardson learn under him, have a year to grow. But if the Titans were to, for any reason, make a move up for any of those top three quarterbacks, Then you cut Ryan Tannehill after the draft, after June 1st, save yourself $27 million. So the Titans do have some options. But for me, if I'm giving you an answer right now, don't cut Ryan Tannehill. I don't see a viable option out there that would be better for the Titans to compete in 2023. And you're only saving yourself $17.8 million. You got dead cap of $18.8 million. I think I'd rather just keep Tannehill than try to look for another realistic option. For the Titans. So wanted to break down Ryan Tannehill's situation and that post-June 1st scenario is something that we're going to talk about with some other players as well. But before we get into that, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made simple. And Prize Picks has ratcheted it up here recently. It used to be two to five players, and you could win 10 times your money. Now, they have the option to do two to six players, and you can make up to 25 times your money on your entry. So what do you got to do to win? Prize Picks has a projection for every player. Patrick Mahomes, 300 passing yards. Uh, Jamar Chase, 100 receiving yards. Christian McCaffrey, 50 rushing yards. Jalen Hurts, two passing touchdowns. All you do is pick two to six players. And say whether the player is going to do more or less than that projection. If you win, again, you have the chance to win up to 10 uh, 10 times or 25 times your money on your entry. Right now, go to prizepicks.com or just download the PrizePicks app right on your phone. It's that simple. And sign up with the promo code Locked On. You're going to receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 if you're a first-time user. So you deposit $100. 
Price Picks gives you 100. You deposit $50, Price Picks gives you $50, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Don't forget, use the promo code Locked On to sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100 at PrizePicks.com. Titans fans, we are going to continue breaking down the Tennessee Titans top cut candidates. We got to talk about Taylor Lewan, Robert Woods, Bud Dupree, all of those names. Before we do, want to remind you guys, I appreciate you making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. Remember, this is day one of the off-season roadmap week. We're talking cut candidates today. Tomorrow is in-house free agent decisions. Wednesday and Thursday are team needs and how the Titans should address them, draft or free agency or both. Draft, free agency or both. One of my favorite off-season games to play Friday. I will have a full seven-round mock draft to try to address that. So we're doing cuts, we're doing re-signings, we're doing free agency, we're doing draft, all of that and much more. Make sure you stay subscribed, get subscribed to the Locked On Titans podcast. But for your second listen, or technically not your second listen, but do want to tell you guys about a cool thing that the Titans are doing with the Senior Bowl. The Titans are doing them all over the place. Locked on. Get inside analysis from hosts that cover the NFL's next generation in college. Find out which NFL draft boards these players will be climbing all in one location. Subscribe to the Locked On NFL Draft podcast feed or the Locked On NFL Draft YouTube channel. You're going to get nightly shows covering the Senior Bowl Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, breaking down everything you need to know from that day's Super or uh, Senior Bowl practice. It's a great way to get ready for the draft, so I hope you guys will check that out. But diving into these cut candidates even further, number one, we got to talk about Taylor Lewan. And look, this is going to be a quick one for me. You got to cut him. Taylor Lewan knows he's getting cut. He's talked about it publicly. Here's the reality. Taylor Lewan has played, what, like 20 games in the last three seasons for the Titans? He can't stay healthy anymore. If we're honest, you look at that PED suspension that he had. Has he been able to stay healthy consistently since? No. So, not only is Taylor Lewan's availability and health a good reason to cut him, But we just talked about dead money if the Titans cut Ryan Tannehill. You know how much dead money the Titans would have if they cut Taylor Lewan? Zero. Let me tell you in Spanish. Zero. Okay? Zero dead money on the cap if the Titans cut Taylor Lewan. They're in prime position to add a new left tackle in the draft. It's a decent free agency group at left tackle as well with guys like Orlando Brown. Andre Dillard, Mike McGlinchey, Isaiah Wynn. I mean, there are some good options at the top of the market, in the middle of the market. I think it only makes sense for the Titans to cut Taylor Lewan. And if they do, they're going to say $15 million. 14.8, if we're being precise. How, how is there any argument to not cut Taylor Lewan? That's why Lewan knows himself, and he said publicly at media appearances, they're going to cut me. He knows because it's just the most logical decision. And when you look at a Titans team who, depending on what site you look at, is anywhere from $17, $18 to $23 million above the cap, cutting Taylor Lewan for zero dead money and saving $15 million with his recent health, I mean, it's the biggest slam dunk of them all on this list. So I do not expect Taylor Lewan to be on the Titans next year. I went on a big rant about it a couple of weeks ago. They're not going to cut him and then bring him back for a cheaper deal because why would Taylor Lewan sacrifice his body for less money than he thinks he's worth? He's going to go be a media star. So that's an easy one. Moving forward, next you have Robert Woods. And to me, Mike Rabel talked about speed in the offseason already. I have talked to you guys about the fact that the Titans need to get cheaper and younger as a roster. Robert Woods is another slam dunk. You are cutting Robert Woods. It sucks that you gave up a pick for him, but it wasn't some insane pick that the Titans had to give up to get Robert Woods. So I'm cutting Robert Woods. If you do, you save $12 million with only $2.6 million in dead cap. 
The Titans need to get faster and younger at wide receiver. Robert Woods coming off the ACL. He may be better this year in a more pass-friendly offense where he's not the number one wide receiver for most of the season with Traylon Burks being out for a lot of the time. Robert Woods wasn't put in a great position. But that doesn't mean that he's worth $14 million on the cap this year. So you cut Robert Woods. You save $12 million. You have $2.6 million in dead cap. That's not that bad whatsoever. I expect Robert Woods to be cut pretty quickly by the Titans. And then this last guy that I want to talk about in this segment is Bud Dupree. And some of you guys don't like me for it. Bud Dupree has let me know that he sees what I say about him. But I don't really care because I have said since the moment Bud Dupree was signed by John Robinson, that this is a mistake. And it has proven to be a mistake. Bud Dupree will be cut. And I've said it since the moment that he was signed, that he would be cut after two years. There was an out in his contract to cut him after two years. And since the contract was signed, it was obvious that's what would happen. Because Bud Dupree is nowhere near worth 18 to $20 million. He is a, a compliment pass rusher. He was the fourth best pass rusher on the Steelers behind Tuitt and Hayward and Watt. And somehow, John Robinson saw that and thought, yeah, this guy deserves $20 million. He's a number one pass rusher. He was the fourth best pass rusher on the Titans in 2021. Landry, Autry, and Simmons are all better pass rushers than Bud Dupree. So always insane. Never understood that contract. If you cut Bud Dupree, Look, the dead cap situation isn't as clean as Lawan or Woods. You'd have $10.8 million in dead cap, $9.3 million in savings. But back to that post-June 1st cut. I think Bud Dupree is a prime candidate to be cut after June 1st. And I told you that's an option with Tannehill, but I wouldn't pursue it unless you get a top three quarterback. To me, this is what the Titans need to do. Cut Bud Dupree as a post-June 1st designation. Then you save $17 million and only have $3.2 million in dead cap. So an extra 7 to $8 million you're going to save yourself. And again, the Titans did this method with Julio Jones last year to save themselves $15 million after June 1st. And what they did was they waited to sign their draft picks so that they could use that money to do it. And then you got a little bit of money to play with going into the season to make roster moves throughout the year. People only worry about cap space with free agency. You got to worry about cap space with your draft class and with your in season moves. Everybody wanted the Titans to trade for Jerry Judy and stuff during the season. Uh, well, you got to have cap space to take in a guy like that. So to me, like Julio Jones last year, Bud Dupree should be cut. And he should be cut as a post-June 1st designation. So the Titans save $17 million on his cut. Only have 3.2 dead money. No, they won't be able to use that money during free agency. But it'll help them with their draft class and their in-season moves, which they'll need money for as well. So that are those are the non-quarterback big-time cuts the Titans need to make. Now, I want to go into some smaller cuts. But guys who, nonetheless, will be on the chopping block. And I got one surprise guy that maybe it's not a surprise to hear his name, but it would surprise me if he was cut because although you guys don't like him, it doesn't make a lot of sense to cut him financially. So we're going to get into that in just a moment. Before we do, want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book partner of Locked On and the official sports book partner of of the NFL. I'm so excited to talk to you guys about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because FanDuel is the number one sports book in America. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have a ton of great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Right now, if you download the FanDuel app or you go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On, you're going to be able to get $150 in free bets, bonus bets, even if you don't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score touchdowns. You could do parlays, single game parlays, teasers, futures. I mean, it's all incredible. And the FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, 
and easy to use. I've told you guys this all last week. I put some money on the Bengals. I'm recording this before the game. We'll talk tomorrow about whether I hit or not, but I felt pretty good about that. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on, and you can claim a no-sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more at FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the NFL, 21 plus in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued as non withdrawable sports book bonus bets, which expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Minnesota, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Virginia. 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. 1 888 789 777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1 800 9 with it in Indiana. 1 800 522 4700 in uh, Kansas or you could visit kansasgamblinghelp.com. 1 877 770 Stop in Louisiana. Visit www.mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY in New York, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming, or visit www.1800gambler.net in West Virginia. Guys, just bet responsibly. Titans fans, I'm literally exhausted after the end of the FanDuel read. My Lord, my Lord, that was a mouthful, but I appreciate you guys sticking through it. We are going to cap off these cut candidates, talk about the other guys who are maybe lesser names that are being discussed, but still nonetheless guys who probably need to be cut by the Titans. And one guy that all of you guys want to be cut and it's not going to happen. But before we get into that, I do want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. Remember, it is off-season roadmap week, day one. We're going to do guys the Titans should re-sign tomorrow, draft, sign, or both on Wednesday and Thursday for offense and defense, a full seven-round mock draft on Friday. Before we get into the rest of the cut candidates, do want to let you guys know that you should check out the Locked On NFL podcast. For your second listen, you get your Titans news here with me. Get your national NFL news with the Locked On NFL podcast. But diving back into cut candidates, Zach Cunningham. So let me throw this at you guys a little bit. One, Cunningham was hurt a bunch last year. Two, some whispers that uh, he's not a guy who works very hard. Guy who didn't really take his rehab as serious and work as hard at it as maybe he should have. If you guys remember, Mike Vrabel had a comment about guys who only work from 8 to 4 and how that's not going to work in pro sports. There are some whispers out there that that may have been directed at Zach Cunningham amongst other people as well. So for me, easy cut to cut Zach Cunningham. I would do everything I can to keep David Long, and if they cut Cunningham... $9 $9 million in savings, $4.5 million in dead cap. I'll eat the dead cap to save the $9 million. You could literally probably flip that over and give that money directly to David Long. So for me, that's an easy one. See a Zach Cunningham. I'd rather see Dr. Gibby. I'd rather see Monty Rice. I'd rather see Chance Campbell. I'd rather the Titans draft another linebacker. Uh, David Long, of course. Either way, easy cut for me. See a Zach Cunningham. Uh, next, Randy Bullock. Listen, Bullock has been consistent and solid for the Titans, quite frankly, after having years of like insanely bad kicking. But he's not good enough to pay nearly $3 million. Okay? Not a chance, man. Not a chance. And if you cut Randy Bullock, you save $2 million and only have $600,000 in dead cap. Not even a question. The Titans need a kicker who can kick for over 50 yards. And yeah, Randy Bullock made the 51-yarder against Jacksonville. That was the longest kick he made all year. 
and the Titans wouldn't be in that position if Randy Bullock could have hit a 48-yarder in week one against the Giants. They would have been in the playoffs if you're somebody who wanted that. So the Titans can do better than Randy Bullock, and at $3 million? <laughs> Not a chance. So I'm cutting Randy Bullock with ease. Last player that I think should be cut is Jamarco Jones. The biggest story or the biggest impact that Jamarco Jones had on the Titans season was him and Taylor Lewan getting in a fight during training camp. I think Jamarco Jones is a crybaby, quite frankly. I think Taylor Lewan was probably teasing him and Jamarco threw a fit. And I also think that Jamarco could have played through injury, but I think he decided to get surgery. Marcus Mariota did this to the Falcons. Once they benched him, he said, fine, I'm going to go get this surgery that I could have waited until after the season to have, but you're going to bench me. I'm going to go do it now, and I'm going to go have surgery, and I'm leaving the team, and I'm going home. That is a thing that happens in the NFL all the time. That's one of those inner workings things that maybe casual fans don't realize. Players could go have surgery at any point in time to fix their injuries. Most of the guys on the Titans probably needed a cleanup surgery of some kind. But instead of doing, like Jeffrey Simmons, Simmons could have had surgery on his ankle, but he said, no, I'm going to play the rest of the year and I'll deal with it afterwards. Happens every year. These players could say, no, I want to get surgery now. I'm not going to fight through it. Nope, nope. And I think, personally, it's my opinion and my guess, I think that's exactly what Jamarco Jones did. He didn't get a starting job over Aaron Brewer. Taylor Lewan was teasing him, being the kind of guy that we know Taylor Lewan is, which I don't have a problem with. There's a lot of guys that are bullies like that in the NFL. Look at Micah Parsons' uh, college experience. Ugh. So, I, I just think Jamarco Jones is a crybaby. I don't think he's a guy who wants to work hard through injury. and. The Titans are going to save a million dollars if they cut him. It'd be $1.4 million in dead cap. But again, this is another guy. Post-June 1st cut chance. If you designate Jamarco Jones as a post-June 1st cut, you save $2 million. You only have $375,000 in dead money. So get Jamarco Jones off this team, man. Come on. He's never going never gonna to help the team. So just go ahead and do it. Uh, the last player that I want to talk about here, a lot of you guys in my comments or on Twitter have said the Titans should cut Caleb Farley. Cut Caleb Farley. Cut Caleb Farley. Okay, I get it. Odds are Caleb Farley's never going to be what the Titans wanted him to be. Odds are Caleb Farley may not ever even be a contributing player for the Titans on defense. But let me just school you guys to reality. If the Titans cut Caleb Farley, they saved $3.6 million, and they have $7.5 million in dead cap. It makes way more sense for the Titans to keep Caleb Farley and just hope that he can turn it around. Doesn't make any sense to cut Caleb Farley to save $3.6 million when you're going to have $8 million, $7.9 million in dead cap. So you guys can hate him all you want. You can say he's a bust. You could talk about how he's never going to be anything for the Titans. And you know what? You may be right. But financially speaking, it doesn't make any sense to give up on Caleb Farley right now. It just simply does. But that's going to do it for me today. That's my opinion on all of the cut candidates, how the Titans should process them, what they should do. Tomorrow, we're going to go through the list of in-house free agents for the Titans. I'm going to say which of those guys they need to bring back. So make sure that you stay locked into the Locked on Titans podcast for that. Get subscribed. Stay subscribed. But that's going to do it for me today, folks. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.